Welcome Seekers, you have made it to the Tarot Magician's channel. My name is Ricky, and today I bring you another Pick A Card Tarot reading. Now, in this Pick A Card, we are going to talk about what is coming next in love. I'm going to go into great detail, and um, we're just going to dive right into it. Now, before we start, I want to remind you Seekers to subscribe to the channel. I will be creating many more picket card videos just like this one, so subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, also, if you are interested in a private reading, I am offering those at this time. Uh, you will have to go through my Etsy store in order to actually be able to place your private reading. Uh, so the link to that is going to be in the description below. All right, so seekers, let's go ahead and get started. In front of you, you have three groups. All right, three groups, three different images per group. I want you to take a moment to pick the group that calls to you the most, to pick the group that really says, this is for you, whichever group. This is group number one, this is group number two, and this is group number three. Take a moment. If you're drawn to multiple groups, then go ahead and watch both or even all three groups, if you're drawn to more than one. Now, the timestamps are going to be in the description below. Welcome, group number one. Welcome. All right. So before we get started, group number one, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Don't forget to give this video a like. And if you are interested in booking a private reading with me, I am offering those at this time. You will have to go through my Etsy store. The link is going to be in the description for that Etsy store. Thank you, Seekers. So, in front of you, you have a card from the Lover's Oracle deck. This is the box from the Lover's Oracle deck. And so this is going to represent the theme for what's coming next in love for you. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's get a close-up of this uh, artwork. You know, you've got a woman here lying face down. Let's see what the message is behind this, shall we? Hmm. If you can do anything, what would it be? The answer dwells in your heart not in your mind, for the heart is the gateway to the soul. Interesting. All right, so I feel that there is definitely a much deeper message to that, and we're going to try and obtain that from the tarot. But the first thing that I'm noticing when, when, when I just listen to this, you know, when I read this, is healing. Healing of your emotional state. So maybe some of you have been through some very bad relationships, some bad experiences, um, and you are going through a bit of a transition, you know, you are accepting what's good in your life, you're leaving behind what's bad, and so perhaps some of you need a reminder of that. Maybe there are some of you who, uh, you know, even though you know this lesson, now that you're kind of single or, or just, you know, wanting to, to maybe find someone, then you're forgetting that, you know, and perhaps maybe you need a reminder of what you truly want, of what you're leaving behind, of the negative energies that you don't want and the positive energies that you want to attract. And so that's for some of you, you know, for others that perhaps are just um, already know who this person is or already has that person in your life. You know, I feel like um, perhaps potentially there's this desire in you and, and you're, you're thinking to to. I would say too logical. You're putting too much logic into this and you're not feeling this out. You're not operating from a place of intuition. And so maybe there's a blockage that needs to just be opened. And I feel that the tarot is going to answer that question. So let's go ahead. I feel like a lot of you picked this group because there's different, definitely different messages that we can take from this. But we're going to try and get more information. Let's go ahead and throw some tarot. We're going to use a new tarot deck today, all right? We're not going to use the same old, same old. We're going to use a new one. This is the Rose Tarot from Nigel Jackson, all right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, just try and vibe with that deck. Uh, I, I like it. The, the writing is pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and shuffle and see what messages we get. What is coming next in love for you, group number one? That was pretty, that's a pretty intense message right there, you know? And, and there's just many ways that we can that we can interpret that. So I'm interested in seeing what the tarot is going to reveal for you. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. 
This is a brand new tarot deck. I love that new tarot deck smell. I know I'm a bit of a loser. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what is coming next for you? What is coming next for you? Okay. Hmm. So the message has now, the message has now come full circle. Group number one. The me, let me see if I can fix this, see if we can get it in the shot. No, we can't. So we're just going to go ahead and put it right here. You know what? This calls for one more. Okay. All right. So group number one, we've got a pretty intense message here for you. Um, so you've got the Ten of Swords reversed. You've got the Fool reversed, Six of Swords reversed, Four of uh, Batons reversed, uh, Six of Batons upright, and then the King of Cups reversed. Um, the Batons are one. So, boy, oh boy. Um, now the message is really starting to take uh, take shape here. The message here, if you could do anything, what would it be? Right. The answer dwells in your heart, not in your mind, for the heart is the gateway to the soul. The fact that we've got the Fool reversed and the Ten of Swords reversed, which are the cards of... You know, if you were to have those cards upright, these are the cards that would tell you change is coming, like dynamic change. If you were to have those two cards together upright, it's like complete change, something new, something possibly exciting, um, then something horribly dying. You know, there's newness. But the fact that they're both reversed, it's almost like this thinking or just energy of the same of the same of the same. Like nothing is really going to change. Um... And so it's like the, you want to change. The energies around you are screaming change. You know, there's this desire in you, right? Which is why this card is reminding you, if you could do anything, what would it be, right? So it's like a question to yourself because you've been, you potentially have not been asking yourself this question. What do you want? What, what do you want to do, right? Um, it's like maybe you're waiting for something to just appear or for something to turn energy to just come into existence. But Ultimately, I feel like group number one, um, there's this energy of attracting the same kind of energies into your life that didn't serve you right before. And this is something that just is not going to help you. And so the advice here, the advice is the six of swords, the four of batons, six of batons and the king of cups reversed. The advice here is to really ask yourself what it is, what is it that you would want in someone? And so if there's someone that's coming and offering themselves to you and, and wanting to start a new relationship, which I, I definitely feel like this is, this is going to happen. I feel like there's going to be an energy of, of, of someone coming into your life. And, and it's this king right here. It's this king of cups here that's going to be coming, right? Um, but, you know, you have to ask yourself, do I really want this king? Do I really want this person? Do I really want uh, what this uh, person has to offer me? Um, the fact that they are reversed tells me that potentially no. And so, you know, very much so, the reason why this is is because I feel like there are people around you that want to be with you or potentially want something romantic with you. But it's, it's very hard for you, group number one, to actually be able to see that, to see the person, not that, but to see the person that you're meant to be with, uh, to see the person that is going to just offer you everything that you want. I feel like you keep attracting the same kind of negative bad energy, uh, just the same kind of, of bad person. You keep attracting this energy of like, uh, you know, someone that just takes, 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 you know, you keep attracting the person that's not going to take you anywhere. You keep attracting the person that might treat you like crap. You keep attracting the person that's uh, you know, unfortunately, not going to offer you a home. Uh, you keep attracting the person that you can't bring home to, to to your parents, right? You keep attracting this kind of individual, and so the 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 problem here is that you know it. And and the message obviously is is different for everyone. Take what resonates and leave the rest, right? So 
if you're the kind of person who potentially, you know, you've had good relationships, but for some reason it just hasn't worked out, now you, now you need to move on, you know, p potentially what you're, what you're getting here is you're going to get the, the same of the same, but you have to start asking what you want, you have to start demanding it, you have to stop being the person that just accepts things and accepts this kind of energy of, you know, as long as I have that person, I'm going to do anything for them. You know, it's time to really start standing up for yourself a little bit. What do you want? What do you expect for your life? How do you want that to manifest, right? Um, if you don't respect yourself, no one is going to respect you. And so there's this sense of like, you know, illogical thinking that you have to kind of be a certain way for this person to appreciate you or love you or, you know, and, and what you're really doing is you're attracting the same kind of negative energy into your life. You know, this, this kind of chaotic person who you know, they're, they're volatile in their emotional state. The King of Cups reverse is someone who is very damaging to the individual. This isn't the kind of person you want around, you know, very, um, very narcissistic behaviors here. So you're, you're attracting narcissists into your life. All right. And it's important for you to understand why is that happening? And one of the reasons I feel that this message is, is coming through so strongly is because the energies around you are of success. The energies around you are of change. It's like there is success coming into your life. There are good things coming into your life. And so the, the, unfortunately, the energy that you yourself are have inside of you or the energies that you are constantly thinking or, or your thought process hasn't changed or you haven't acknowledged some things or you haven't asked yourself the right questions, right? You don't know what you want. Um, you're just kind of waiting and accepting what life gives you, right? You you want to just let life happen. And so with that kind of energy, what you're doing right now is you're attracting these uh, narcissists into your life. Because narcissists, they prey on people, right? So if you're open, if you're just open just completely, right, to whatever experience comes your way, there's a bit of naiveness to it. And so these narcissists are going to come in. And they're going to try and, and extract as much value from you as humanly possible uh, because you're giving to you're giving into that energy. And so it's time for, for you to really understand what you want. And, 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 you know, once you're able to really, truly ask yourself this question, once you're able to truly put that into your mind where it almost becomes this obsession of what it is, what is it that you want in this person? What how do you want to be treated? And do I have value? And and am I divine, right? And and if you feel it, right, um, you're going to start attracting good people. And 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 you know that attraction. What I mean by attracting is you're going to start seeing the good people because narcissists they tend to stand out in a crowd. They tend to be the loudest. They tend to be the most daring. They tend to be the ones that um, you know uh, get people's attention, right? They do this. It's, it's, it's deliberate, and so. You know, so I think that sometimes you miss the the good people. You're you're missing out on those people, and and it's because you're open to too much. And I think you need to be you need to examine your your yourself. You need to examine your heart. You need to examine what what it, what is it that you want. You know, the answer dwells inside of you. It dwells in your heart, right? Not in your mind. So this isn't a logical thing, um, but I feel like. The energies around you are of success. The energies around you are of finding what's right for you. The six of batons pretty much talks about that success, right? That that's the the energies of the six of batons. It's like trying to achieve that success, having that success, building a a, a life that that is ideal for you. And that might look like the four of batons upright, which is building a structure, building a home, building something that you can take home, right? Um, travel, you know, going some places, experiencing new emotions and experiencing new realities, going to new destinations with this person. And so, you know, I feel like you, your soul is like prepared for this. You really want, it. those are the energies that are around you, right? But it's important for you to start asking yourself the right questions. It's important for you to emotionally open up to the energies and stop attracting this King of Cups here these kings of cups be very very careful with these narcissists okay um because you're, you're gonna get the same old same old right and i feel like a lot of the people that pick this group have already been through that you know, you've already been through these people and um, the problem is that when you date a narcissist when you date someone who's this just 
I mean, it's hard uh, to even to even give them a, a a word because they're these people are just so into themselves, so self-absorbed that there's no room for you. They put you down. They hurt your feelings. They make you feel like you are inadequate uh, or unable. And so sometimes you start believing that, right? And then what happens is that when you when they leave or when you break the relationship, when when things just end, you're left in this kind of belief that you are somewhat somehow lesser than or you have limitations or you're unable and so it's like you have to retrain your mind to let go of that and see the divinity inside of you see the beauty see the intelligence see the the power that's inside of you and so i feel like maybe perhaps you haven't come to that understanding yet of how powerful and beautiful you are you're still open to these negative energies they're coming to you, and unfortunately, you know, you do, at this moment don't have the capacity to tell them no, okay? And if you can't tell a narcissist no, number one, if you can't identify them, then, you know, it's going to be very difficult to be able to get through their, their charms, because they are charming people. And then if you're unable to, once you identify them, tell them no, then they're just going to come in and it's going to be the same old, same old. So... This needs to happen in order for you to actually attract this success right here, this six of batons right here, which is the energy of having what you want in a relationship, in love. All right, so let's throw some oracles. Let's see what the oracle cards are going to tell us. We're going to throw a Whispers of Love. This is one of the older decks, but we're going to throw just one. Whispers of Love, and we're going to see what the Whispers of Love want to whisper to us. Let's see. All right. Simple acts of kindness. All right. And this is, I think, a very personal card. Um, simple acts of kindness. And you've got a little boy here playing with animals, feeding them. There's a sense of community. There's a sense of uh, just love and appreciation for the little, little things. So simple acts of kindness. Kindness energizes you and brings happiness to those around you. All right. So this is nice. Um, Number one, I feel like you have to be kind to yourself. Maybe for some reason, for some of you, some of the people that pick this group, you stop for some reason being kind to yourself. Maybe you're a bit uh, too harsh in some ways. And so that energy is one that's uh, in some ways a bit crippling. Um, it's a very crippling kind of energy. It's got you in this uh, kind of like, you know, I would say the energy of despair, or maybe a little energy of like, you know, very competitive. It's like you're 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 seeking conflict where you shouldn't be seeking conflict. You're kind of acting out in a very negative kind of way. Um, for some of you, it could have been just ways uh, or techniques that you picked up from your past relationship, right? Again, I feel like a lot of you dated a narcissist. I think that's a lot of you dated someone who was very bad, very negative. So your past relationship has influenced you. You've taken from their energy. You've made it your own because you maybe you saw it as a, as, as 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 maybe one of their better qualities, or maybe you unknowingly just picked up on way too much from this narcissist and from this person that was not good for you. So now it's like you're acting it out with the people around you, with your energies, with your friends, and you're acting it out. And so the how you were able to just kind of let go of that simple acts of kindness all right stop speaking badly of people behind their backs you know uh stop gossiping all right that's bad uh stop trying to destroy people's reputations for no reason uh just stop being so negative right when you look at something try and see the beautiful things first don't see the bad things don't don't be cynical um, these are little things, right? Little things that creep in that are very easy to ignore, becomes a part of ourselves. But, you know, those are things that are a part of that narcissistic kind of complex. So, it's, you know, you have to let go of that. Kindness energizes you, brings happiness to those around you. So that is the first step. That's what's going to in some way prepare the energy around you for you to maybe start seeing and attracting kindness. Because, um, yeah, it's important. It's important for what's coming next for your success. All right, let's go ahead and throw some more oracles. We're going to throw an oracle from the goddess of love. Let's see what the goddess of love wants to reveal to us, shall we? We're just going to throw one card from the goddess of love. Let's see what we get.
wisdom, remember. Oof. All right. So, you know, the goddess wants you to remember. All right. The goddess of love wants you to remember what the heck happened to you. Right. Um, so this is an energy of like, listen, you don't want that. You know, you don't want that. Remember the bad times. Just remember. Um, also, it, it's a message to remember the good times. Right. Remember what, what, it, what, what you do want and, and what. What is it that you really truly want out of this? You know, maybe what promises you made to yourself that maybe now you've forgotten because there's an energy of like, you know, loneliness. So it's like, man, I need to change this up right away quickly because this ain't working out, right? Sometimes we forget the promises we make to ourselves. So the fact that you've got there a keyword wisdom, right? You've learned you are a wiser person. You know what you don't want. You know what you do want. So it's time to start really trying to attract this, right? trying to really like find this in people and and ask the universe for you know through prayer uh through communion with spirit you know asking hey i want these energies i would like this so that you can actually attract it all right let's go ahead and throw a priestess of light card priestess of light oracle let's take a look and see what the priestess of light has to share with us We're just going to throw one. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Group number one. Look at what you got coming to you. Woo! You got your twin flame coming. All right. Twin flame. So you are on a twin flame journey. Group number one. And then the keywords there are soul partner eternal connection are you kidding me so this is a beautiful card this is from the priestess of light she's got good good news for you group number one my oh my twin flame soul partner eternal connection so this is a success that i've been talking about you know i i, I saw it with the six of batons i i see it i saw it from the very beginning there's definitely something beautiful coming your way um, the energies around you are of this of this change of this connection of this deepness, right? But um, there's some things that you have to do, right? It's it's uh, it's definitely an energy that you have to, in some ways, align yourself with. Okay, you have to align yourself with this energy, and so potentially, you know, it's been a little bit difficult to do. Uh, maybe, you know, it, it's been a little bit of work, right? I mean, everything in life sometimes is work. Sometimes we just want to try and attract the best, um, but it does require a little work, uh, a little effort. Um, but boy, oh boy, twin flame, soul partner, are you, this is beautiful. So, you know, in many ways, I feel, group number one, um, if you're able to just see the change that's coming, if you're able to align yourself, because one of the things that I see here with this card is an alignment with the divine. You've got this ray of light beaming from the very top and uh, hitting this tiger right in the middle of its, of, its, of, its, of its skull, right? So there is this alignment that's coming into place. And what you have here is a representation of the, the high priestess or the representation of the priest, priestess of light, just kind of looking at that light, right, and kind of guiding you. And um, it's almost like if that tiger has gone through the process that the goddess of love is talking about, the process of wisdom, the process of remembering, and, and the thinking that I want what I want, I don't want this, the promises that you've, that you've told yourself. And so this is you coming into your, your complete self, understanding what you want, understanding what you don't want, understanding why it is that you don't want it, understanding that there is malevolence out there and that you were a victim to that malevolence and now it's like you have a vision you have understanding of what you don't want and you have an understanding of what you do want which is a twin flame a soul partner an eternal connection which is what is coming all right let's throw some more oracles this is this reading just got hella interesting let's go ahead and take a look let's see what um trying to decide which one if, if you if you seekers can see just the amount of cards and oracle cards that I've just got all over the place, I think you would you would probably freak. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do do this one. We're gonna vibe with this one. We are gonna vibe with the language of flowers oracle. You ready? Let me show you the box. 
I've been showing you Seekers the Boxes on every reading, so why stop now? We're going to throw a card from the Language of Flowers. This is from Sherline, Sherline Darcy. So, let's see what flower is going to be presented to you in this relationship. Let's talk about, now that we've uncovered this twin flame, let's talk about this uh, twin flame. What is this twin flame? What flower is going to be presented to you? Oh my, look at that. My goodness. You are going to be presented with an Antarctic Pearl Word. And uh, this is the card of purity. All right. This is the card of purity. And you've got the number 33 there as well. 33 is a very important, important number. Three for me is the card of things coming into your existence that you've kind of uh, planned planted or wanted or, or you know you've asked for it at some point and now you know those ships are coming back um so the fact that you've got that number three double 33 there's an energy here of you getting what essentially you've asked for or getting what you have agreed to even before you came into this life so this is very much a soul contract right here you know twin flame soul partner eternal connection Group number one, you are a part of a, um, you have a soul contract with someone. You have a soul contract with a person, right? And so twin flames are very much a part of you. I mean, they're they're your, they're like your mirror opposite, right? Um, they mirror everything about you. It's like you two are connected in a very powerful, dynamic way. It's like you're the same person, right? So there's definitely an agreement in place for this person to come in. Uh, there's an agreement in place for this energy to come into your life. And um, I feel like it's going to be very, very special because this is the person that you're going to be with for, I believe, your entire life. I don't see a divorce in this relationship. I don't see, um, you know, uh, any kind of like disconnection in any way. I feel like this connection is going to be one of success. You know, we, we go right back to the six of batons, success. And so why success? You know, why is this connection so beautiful? Let's look at the flower. We've got purity, right? Anything that's pure. That's the key word uh, attached with this, uh, with this flower of yours, right? Purity. And so anytime you have something pure, it's, uh, it's definitely something beautiful. It's something that's worth keeping. It's something that's worth treasuring. It's something that comes into our lives to just change our lives completely, to add value to our lives, to add beauty to our lives, to add care, to just add all of the elements that we've been missing. Purity is the answer to a lot of just sorrow. And so, you know, the funny thing that we have that purity right underneath simple acts of kindness, right? Kindness energizes you and brings happiness to those around you. Right underneath it, we have purity. So it's like, I feel that one of the reasons why spirit wants you to start acting out in this fashion and just becoming that kind of, uh, of beautiful little, little, you know, child that just feeds the animals and just enjoys the little things and sees all the beauty and positivity and everything is because... This person that's coming to you in some ways is a pure person. And you yourself are also a very pure person, but you've been corrupted. And I feel that that corruption has come from your past relationships. You've taken too much from these um, egotistical, narcissistic kind of personalities. And so now you have to just let go of that, right? Um, because it's not going to serve you in your next relationship in this twin flame soul partner eternal connection kind of relationship. So purity has to be a big part of it. This person is someone who I believe right now is just, they're kind of aligned with that energy of purity. They're aligned with that energy of, of, sim, of simplicity, you know, acts of kindness and beauty. Um, and, you know, it's like in order for this relationship to just really be magical, in order for you to really just see their energy and identify it and know that it's them and know that this is the opportunity that you've been waiting for, that connection that you've been waiting for, you have to be kind of vibrating in that same kind of purifying energy that they're going to be vibrating under. All right. So let's go ahead and throw some some mini cards. And I've gotten away from the mini cards just because I feel that I've been using them way, way, way too much. But you know what? I'm getting back to it. We're going to throw a secret garden mini card just for just for fun. All right. Just for kicks. <laughs> so let's go ahead and shuffle. And throw one card. Let's see. Radiance. Radiance, radiance, radiance. Keep your head held high and follow the sun. Bam. 
Very strong, strong message, okay? Keep your head held high and follow the sun, radiance. Beautiful, beautiful energy. Um, so now we've got a little more information from spirit of what you should be doing, uh, what energies you should be kind of um, just trying to, to attract or things that you should be doing in order to attract this person. So keep your head held high and follow the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of happiness and joy. Uh, it is in the tarot. Um, it's also an energy of just finding the finding the ability to be content with your lot. And also it's an energy of like trying to be as open as you possibly can to all of the beautiful possibilities. All right. Now we talked at the beginning about that openness, right? And and the fact that there is a bit of naiveness with your with the openness for some of you. And I feel that the reason why that is is because right now, you know, you are acting from a place of pessimism. You're acting from this place of like darkness. So once you're able to kind of turn that around and you're able to just start being simple again and just doing and, and finding joy for yourself, you know, and, and just trying to be alone and finding that energy of, of being happy on your own, you're going to be able to just start tapping into this kind of purifying energy. And um, you're going to start almost like glowing, you know, that's why we've got radiance as the key word with this card, radiance. You will become radiant. And that's how they'll know, right? Because it's also them. How are they going to know that you're the one, right? From a, from a crowd of, of, there's so many people right out there. How, how are they going to know that you're the one? Well, you are literally going to radiate. You're, you're going to be radiant. And one of the ways that you do that is by keeping your head held high and following the sun. Head, head held high means self-esteem as well. Believing that you are beautiful, believing that you are radiant, believing that you glow, right? Believing that you are you are great in many ways. And so for some of you, you know, you believe the complete opposite. Maybe you don't. Maybe right now you're telling yourself, no, I, I believe that I'm great. I believe that I'm beautiful. I believe all these beautiful things. But when you are actually walking, when you're actually going to work, when you're going to school, when you're doing the, 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 the everyday activities in life, that's when you forget it, right? You start kind of lowering your voice in front of certain people. You don't express yourself fully. You second guess yourself, you know? So there's a lot of energies of, I, I, I'm not complete or I'm not, you know, it's like you, there's triggers, right? There's triggers. Life has many triggers for you. And so it's important to start identifying those triggers so that you can address it and see and be this radiance. All right, we're going to throw just one more card, one more mini card where it's going to be the whisper, whispering woods. Let's see what the whispering woods wants to whisper to us. Light. Ha <laughs> ha. So the final message from spirit to you, look to the space between the trees for answers. Beautiful. <sighs> That's a deep message. Look to the space between the trees for answers. You know, I feel like spirit is telling you, look, you're not going to, you, you, you're not, you can't expect to get something new um, from, from the same sources that you've been getting it from. So potentially, you know, there might be some connections that um, just aren't serving you. But ultimately, the, the, the main direct message here is that spirit has your back. Spirit is going to start giving you some insight. Spirit is going to start guiding you in the right way. Just be open to it, right? Be open to seeing the messages. And if it seems a bit obscene, then perhaps there's something there that you can learn from. Perhaps there's some kind of deeper meaning to that event or that situation that you're going to be able to take from. And so spirit wants to teach you that there's more to life than just what meets the eye. All right. Group number one, that is what I see here. I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for more Pick A Card videos like this. Don't forget to give this video a like as well. And if you are interested in a private reading, I am offering those at this time. You're going to have to go through my Etsy store in order to place your uh, private reading. The link is going to be in the description below. Um, you know, many people have already bought the private readings. Um, I love working with you seekers. So looking forward to if you haven't already uh, placed your private reading request. I do have uh, I do have some availability right now. So take advantage. Let me know if you have any questions. 
Um, leave some comments below. It's um, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Seekers. I'm getting a lot of comments, and I read them all. Um, at least I'm trying to, but there's a lot of them. Um, and I have so much work that I want to put into the channel. Um, so it, it's becoming a bit, I'm not going to lie, it's becoming a bit chaotic to keep up with all the comments and responding back and talking to every single individual person um, because there's just so many. Um, you know, I, I knew I was going to get to this point. <laughs> I just, um, sometimes I think I'm Superman that I can do everything. Uh, but yeah, you know, time time is limited. And so I have to try and see what I do with my time um, and, and how I can I can better uh, bring these videos to you and just make it a bit more dynamic and also utilize my time effectively. So I'm kind of working on that. I have some ideas and some projects that I'm going to be bringing out and, and talking to you seekers about. Um, so hope hopefully you you you, you know you're on board with it. Uh, hopefully what I have coming up will in some ways you know motivate you and um, help you. I really do because um, I have a lot of plans for the channel. So. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for that, Seekers. Thank you so much for your love. Uh, thank you so much for supporting me. Um, obviously, you know, this channel is something that um, I hold near and dear to my heart because I feel that it, it's going to help people. You know, spirituality is something that is lacking. Uh, we're Unfortunately, we're getting away from it. And um, I, I want to try and bring this as much as possible and reach as many people as possible. Um, you know, one of the things that I've read with Generation uh, Z is that one in five teenagers have tried suicides. You know, that's that's terrible. It's, it, it's, it's telling me that the newer generations are in some ways just suffering, right? There's nihilism. And so I feel that this channel can can address that, can maybe change that, can can help in that process. I feel that this channel is an important tool to, to, to just bring awareness to that and, and ultimately change that. But I want to try and um, and just give everything that I have inside of me to it, and I have to I have to manage my time accordingly. So we'll see. Thank you, seekers. I love you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything you you've given me. Uh, thank you for your beautiful words of kindness. And bye bye. Welcome, group number two. Welcome. All right. So before we get started, group number two, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. I will be creating many more picket card videos like this one. Don't forget to give this video a like as well. Hit the notification bell. Um, also, if you are interested in a private reading with me, you will have to go through my Etsy store. The link for that Etsy store is going to be in the description below. All right. So Let's get started. In front of you, Seekers, you have a card from the Lover's Oracle deck, right? This is going to represent the theme for today's reading. Let's take a look at the artwork associated with this. Interesting, interesting artwork with this card. Let's see the message. Wait. Don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. Oof. That is a very dynamic message dynamic message and um you know i think that it speaks very heavily to those people that have someone in mind all right so maybe you have a crush maybe you have someone that's um interested right maybe there's a suitor maybe there's just something going on right now for those of you who are thinking that okay maybe this is it okay maybe i should act okay maybe there's something that needs to be done right you're being told by this card to just wait Wait, don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. For those of you who um, really aren't thinking of anyone or there's really no one there, or the opportunity isn't there, or there's no crush, maybe the message will materialize into something else. So we're going to throw some tarot and uh, take a look and see. But very interesting card to open up the reading, right? Very interesting and for what's coming next, next in love. Now, we're going to use a different tarot deck this time around, Seekers. We're not going to use the same one. We're going to use a new deck. It came out not too long ago. It's called the Rose Tarot by Nigel Jackson. All right, so let's go ahead and shuffle, shuffle, and try and get some information, some insight into what is coming next in love for you, Seekers. So, shuffle. What is coming next? My, oh my. All right. All right, all right, all right. All 
Man, group number two, you know, you've got some very nice, very nice cards, okay? Very nice cards here. Uh, number one, you've got the Ace of Cups. All right, number two, you've got the Ace of Coins. This is more understanding as to what is coming next, right? So you've got two very beautiful cards. You know, the Ace of Cups, it's a very, very inviting card, especially uh, when it's a love reading. You know, what is coming next in love? What this card tells me is that there's a new relationship coming for you. There's new love coming into your life, okay? The Ace is essentially heralding a new just a new dynamic when it comes to a relationship. So if you if you have been very much so looking for something new, group number one, no group, I'm sorry, group number two, this is the time. This is when you get that, right? The Ace of Cups is telling you there is a new relationship coming. And then it's followed by the Ace of Coins. Are you kidding me? Two aces upright, both. Um, this is essentially telling you that this relationship that is coming that is coming to you is is definitely one of value. I mean, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been expecting. So not only will this relationship offer you love, um, it'll offer you this energy of just, um, you know, emotional stability. It's also going to offer you wealth and prosperity and in, in the same and then that other same coin. It's like, you're going to be able to have the best of all worlds. You know, I feel like some of you have envisioned a reality where, you know, you meet the right person, uh, you start a family, uh, there's love, there's appreciation, there's an understanding that we're doing this because we want, uh, you know, to grow together, to expand, to experience life together. So there's a desire to do that. There's a desire to, to, uh, just, you know, um, be together, be together and actually create something beautiful, build a family. And so with these two cards, essentially, what you are getting is the best of what you've envisioned for yourself. Now, you know, it's funny, because we got we, we come right back to this card here in the middle, right? And you've got here such a such a like loud message, wait, don't rush into it, allow nature to take its course. So it's interesting, because it's like, for some of you, you have to intuitively feel what the energies are around you. And so perhaps there's someone that is just knocking at your door, right? And just asking you, it's like, I'm the one, you know, I want to be with you. Um, you know, maybe they've seen your profile and they just keep messaging you and you're like, oh my goodness, is this the person? Is this going to be like, wow, this person is very interested. I like this about them. I like that about them. Wait, don't rush into it, right? So... Perhaps some of you are very close to finding this person that you really want that answers all of your questions, but you have a lot of other suitors around um, and other potential people that unfortunately just aren't going to offer you what you want. And so if you were to say yes to them, then it would actually perhaps just put this relationship that you've been wanting on hold. And... Um, you don't want that. All right. You don't want that. And it's evident that you might miss out on that relationship because you've got the Ten of Swords here, which is uh, just, um, I would say, sudden endings, right? That's what this card essentially represents, sudden endings, an ending to something. And so it's like maybe there's a course, right? There's, a, there's an energy that you've really wanted. There's something that you've been manifesting and you've been heading in that direction and you've been heading in that direction and you're almost there. But you know, there's other things that seem all pretty and, and, you know, there's other relationships and other people that you maybe have envisioned a life with and those aren't the right ones. Maybe you feel it, but you're entertaining the idea because sometimes we don't want to be alone. We want people, we want experiences, we want to have that, um, you know, we want to be able to take a person that potentially is not ideal or and, and change them, right? And so many times people don't really change all that much, right? They're at their core, they are who they are. So maybe instead of taking on a project, right, um, you should wait. You should wait and allow for this energy that's everything that you've ever wanted to come into your life. All right. So interesting. And then you've got also, you know, nine of cups, six of coins, upright. You know, these are advice cards. Um, these are advice cards. And then you've got the two of batons reverse as an advice card too. So there's this energy of like wanting to plan, wanting to perhaps um, experience something new, but with the two of batons reverse, you're being told to, to wait, stop planning, 
Stop trying to just create something new. Stop moving. Wait, stop moving. Just stay still for a moment. Look around, right? Look around and see what's around you and wait. Wait for the energies to come to you because this energy is going to come to you, right? You just have to wait for it and uh, not rush into anything. Wait for that energy to come to you. Uh, and you're going to see it. You're going to be able to identify it. It's going to feel, uh, when you come into the right energy, right, into the right person, it's going to feel like you are extremely happy. You're never going to feel in any way, shape, or form like you are perhaps unhappy. Or, and you're not going to feel intuitively like there might be something missing, or this person is off, or, you know, that, that feeling that you just know that maybe there's something that, um, you know, isn't being said, or maybe there's something that you're missing out on, or, or there's this energy that you, it's just not right, doesn't sit well in your soul. You're not going to feel that with this person. You're going to feel content, happy. Um, you're going to feel exactly like this Nine of Cups, which is essentially a a heart on fire, right? Being ignited. You've got a symbolism here of uh, spirit, just um, kind of, you know, uh, just there's so much excitement going on with this Nine of Cups, right? There's vision, there's understanding, there's insight. Uh, there's this energy of just knowing that um, you're a part of something truly great. And so, you know, when you're with this person, you're going to feel that. And um, this person is going to try. You're going to see a lot of effort. So you've got the six of coins here, six of coins. You've got a man, um, you know, an illustration of someone. We're not going to assign genders. Just an illustration of someone who is essentially, you know, giving everything that he's got, right, or that they have. Um, so this person is essentially going to really try very hard to please you, to be everything for you. Um, they're going to do all the right things, right? They're going to just say the right things. Uh, they're going to act the right way. This is someone who you're going to feel very happy with. So this is the energy that this person is going to be kind of, you know, uh, vibrating with. And you're going to pick up on it right away. Okay. Uh, interesting. All right. So let's go ahead and throw some Oracle cards. We're going to see what the Oracle cards have to tell us. And we're going to start with the Whispers of Love. Why not, right? We're going to start with the Whispers of Love Oracle deck. And we're going to let the Whispers of Love whisper a little, a little message to us. So here we go. Here we are. Treasure your loved ones. Okay. So interesting. Uh, treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. And you've got here... Almost a mother figure, um, just you know, really uh, spending some time with her, with her child, right? And there's this energy of just togetherness, and um, it's almost like the totality here, right? Of of just the existence of humanity. And and you've got the number ten on top, which is a number of reaching an end, uh, uh, you know, reaching the end of a cycle. Interesting. Um, you know, I feel like this card is telling you that while you're waiting for this energy to come into your life, spend some time with your loved ones. Spend some time with the people around you that have dedicated their time and energy and effort to really helping you. You know, people that you know genuinely, intuitively, when you look at them, does this person truly love me? Or are they just around because they want to take something from me or they want to be entertained, right? Those energies you don't want. You don't want to dedicate an, uh, time to those people. But you do want to dedicate time and energy and effort and attention to the people that actually treasure you. You want to treasure them. Those are your loved ones. So, you know, while you wait, dedicate time to those people, to those friends, to those connections that are just so dynamic and have helped you through so much sorrow and so much negativity in your past, right? These are the people that you can always count on when um, the... The night is always darkest, right? So really go back to those people while you're waiting, while you're um, seeing this energy come. All right, so now we're going to try and get a little insight from the Priestess of Light. huh? Let's get a little insight from the Priestess of Light Oracle. We're going to throw just one card. We're going to take a look. Oof. All right. You've got a powerful one. Brilliant belief. Number 45. Interesting. Um, so you've got here brilliant beliefs. Uh, keywords attached to this card are luminous life force 
and personal power. Man, oh man. Um, so I, I kept seeing something new, right? And now this card is like talking about what that new thing is, is going to look like. And you've got here essentially a representation of you almost in some ways you are that priestess right and you're looking out into the horizon and you're kind of inviting that in and so even your guides are here by your side taking a look in the same direction and they're amazed at what is about to come and unfold for you because it's like oh my goodness we've worked so hard for this and there it is right so interesting interesting energy here with this um priestess of light so what i see here and the fact that I kept seeing new beginnings, you know, number 10, the ending of a cycle, the beginning of a new one. Um, now we have here the, the actual understanding of what is coming, right? A luminous life force, a personal power, a brilliant belief. And so what this kind of boils down to is the ability to manifest from that internal energy that's inside of you. The ability to see things clearly, so clear that you're going to be able to actually bring into existence what you want. Um, you're going to be able to, in some ways, look further, look beyond situations, look beyond the, the current existence that you are experiencing, see a little further, and, and just be able to make decisions that are good for you, be able to make decisions that are going to take you towards more positive experiences. So, you know, and I say all these things, and it may seem simple, but you know, a lot of people don't don't walk with that energy. You know, they, they have trouble getting there. Um, it's like they they every decision they make seems like a pitfall. You know, everything that they've wanted to want or are wanting to, to manifest, it's like it ends up blowing in their faces. You know, they end up being almost disgraced and and disfavored and downtrodden. And so, you know, I feel like you, group number two, you've put in some work. All right. I feel that this is. This is you reaching a place where you've dedicated time, attention, you know, there's 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 power in what you are doing. Um, and, um, you know, this is just you and the universe telling you, here you go. It's like, this is exactly what you've been manifesting. Uh, this is exactly what you've been wanting. This is exactly what's going to come to you. Here you go. All right. Um, and it's almost like in some ways the, the, the theme of this reading is wait don't rush, right? And it's interesting because I, you know, the, the vibrations of the universe that we have at this moment and, and from the beginning of time, the vibrations are blessings to those that are constantly moving forward, right? That's the vibration that we're all under. Uh, to, the, to, the, to the person who unfortunately does not move, does not change, does, does not expand, um, that person tends to fall behind. That person tends to experience more darkness. You are on the other side of that. You know, you have that kind of wand fire energy where you see a situation and you move forward to address it. You go you go towards it, towards it. Um, and it's almost like if that energy is at this moment in time, it's reached a place. It's reached it's reached its ending. Right. And it's going to that energy is going to now transform into something else. And so if there's a lesson that you need to learn right now is to learn to maybe not be so quick, right? Don't be too quick to stop and enjoy your surroundings for now. See what you have around you, right? Go back to the relationships that, that, um, that are with you, that love you, that maybe you can nurture a little bit more, you know, slow down in that area. All right, so that you can welcome in this new transformation, this new energy, this kind of you know luminous life force, just like the the priestess of light is, is talking about here, right? And so, boy, you know, there's definitely uh, something new and beautiful coming into your, into your life, and um, you know, the ace of coins and the ace of cups, it just it exemplifies that newness so so beautifully. All right, so let's go ahead and throw some more oracle cards. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that one. If you secrets can see the mess of cards and decks that I have here, you'd probably freak. But we're going to go ahead and throw one of these oracle cards. This is The Language of Flowers by uh, Cheryl and Darcy. We're going to see what flower is essentially going to be the, the, the flower that this relationship is going to, to, to bring you. We'll just see. Let's see what, what, what your flower is.
Ha ha ha. You got the red tulip. Look at this. You have got the red tulip. And the, the energy of the red tulip is desire. And look at that. You've got the number 13. And the number 13, again, newness, transformation. My goodness. Now it's like it just keeps on appearing for you, you know. Um, so, you know, you've got the tulip, the red tulip. And um, the, that key word, desire, is very powerful. Because I feel like, you know, this energy, this relationship is going to ignite something new inside of you. So you're being asked to take a bit of a pause, right? To wait, don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course, right? But once you're able to reach an understanding of why this wait and see is, is happening, right? Once you, once you get still, once you obtain this, you're going to be ignited in, in a completely new way. And so there's going to be almost an explosion of new things that, that, that can be possible, right? And you can kind of see that. It's like, okay, now we're in a relationship. This, this person is like serious. They're already talking about marriage. Oh my goodness, we got to plan a wedding, right? What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? So it's like an explosion of newness, an explosion of new experiences, an explosion of new opportunities. And what are we going to do here? What, where are we going to do? Where are we going to, you know, it's like, there's so much that is coming. There's, there's just so much that's going to be essentially coming your way that, you know, you are going to, in many ways, be juggling a lot of things. And that's going to ignite your desire because you are going to desire this. I feel like a lot of you are, are looking for this. Like you want this, right? You definitely want this energy in your life. And so the fact that you've desired it and you've wanted it is now going to be presented to you. And I feel like, you know, you guys are going to handle it very well. Like you guys are ready for this. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and throw some more cards. I am having, I'm not going to lie to you, Seekers, I'm having trouble deciding which, because there's so many. Okay, we're going to go ahead and throw the uh, a Goddess of Love Oracle, a Goddess of Love Oracle card. We're going to see what the Goddess of Love wants to tell you at this moment. Let's see what the Goddess of Love wants to reveal to you, wants to tell you. And we'll just go ahead and let the Goddess speak for a little moment here. Authenticity. Oh, okay. Interesting. So you've got here a card uh, from the goddess telling you to be authentic, authenticity, let your truth be heard, right? And the goddess is kind of looking at you and uh, telling you, you got this, right? To speak your truth and uh, make sure that people understand you, make sure that people are uh, receptive to it. So interesting, right? Maybe you've been holding back. Maybe there's going to be uh, this energy of like, you know, I, wa I don't want them to feel bad. I don't want this person to feel like I'm ignoring them. I don't want them to feel bad. Like, I feel so bad. Oh, no. Well, it's time to start speaking the truth, right? Speak the truth. Um, make sure that people understand what you want, when you want it, how you want it, you know, everything. It's time to start communicating effectively and telling people exactly what you want. Um, I feel that this is going to assist you in, in, in this process. It's going to help you. It's going to uh, propel you forward into into where you need to go. Um, it's just going to, to really, really, really help with the energies around you. Authenticity. Speak your truth. Don't hold back. All right. So we're going to, you know, we're going to keep this up. We're going to keep throwing cards. Let's throw a card from the Gratitude Oracle deck. Let's see what the Gratitude Oracle deck has to offer us, huh? If I can get it. Here we go. All right. The Gratitude Oracle. Here's the box for that, for the deck. Grat it by uh, Angela Hartfield. Let's take a look and see what card we get here, shall we? Let's shuffle. Let's see. We can get a little message from Spirit on this one. Clues. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. So Spirit is telling you, look out for the clues. Yep. You know, um, I feel like, and you've got a little girl, like a fairy girl. You know, I feel like she's got, yeah, she's got wings. She's like a little fairy child. And um, I feel that this little fairy child is going to start throwing some clues at you. Um, so I feel the reason why you got this card is because some of you are asking, okay, wait, wait for what? How do I know? When do I know? I feel the energy in you of, listen, I've been, I've been taking care of business for a long time. All right. I'm a go getter. Like you're going to you're going to tell me to wait. 
Wait for what? When? Does this have a time limit? Do I have a timeline? Tell me something, Mr. Tarot Magician. What are you talking about? Wait, right? So, you know, now you've got this card that's telling you clues. You're going to be giving clues. Um, follow the clues. Follow the, um, the energies that are presented to you. You're going to be able to see clearly. Um, just, just wait, right? That's part, that's a part of the message there, right? Allow nature to take its course. And a part of that taking its course is the clues that spirit is going to be presenting to you. Um, and it's going to be pretty overwhelming. You know, you're going to be able to see and understand the messages. So you're going to have to rely on your eyes. You're going to rely on your intuition. If it feels right, then it more than likely is. I feel that your intuition at this time is heightened, right? That's why you've got this, um, uh, a brilliant priestess of light telling you brilliant belief, right? This brilliant belief is a belief in your intuition. It's a belief in seeing clearly. Um, it's a belief that you are walking and understanding. Um, so follow the clues. That's what spirit wants for you to do. Follow the clues. All right. And you know what? We're going to keep this going. Let's see what the ancestor uh, spirit oracle deck wants to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in just seeing what, what we get here. The Ancestor Spirit Oracle deck. Let's see. We're going to throw just one. But let's see what information we get here. I'm not going to assign any task to these cards. We're just going to let them speak. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. We have got here like a 360. Interesting. You know, you know, I said I was not going to assign any purpose to this card. I'm just going to let spirit speak. And spirit literally said, OK, fine, we're just we're, we're going to do a complete 360 and we're going to talk about something that we haven't even talked about at all. And that's your health. Interestingly enough, look at this whole self health, natural therapies, balance, Ayurveda. So, I mean, come on. And so you have here a merchant, you know, he's got a bunch of fruits, uh, vegetables, a lot of healthy stuff, right? So group number two, I am not a dietitian, And so obviously I'm not going to tell you what you should do, what should you, what you should be putting in your body. Uh, that is not what this reading is about. Um, but I am a vegan. All right. I personally follow a vegan diet and that has worked for me. And when I look at this card, it's like, look at everything that's, that is presented here, right? You've got just so much fruit, so much greenery. Um, and then you have a whole self-health, you know, natural therapy. So you've got here almost like um, a pool from, from spirit telling you to focus on your health, uh, focus on what you at this moment potentially are putting in your body. Maybe there's going to be a tendency or there has been a tendency to um, eat unhealthy things that are going to just maybe put a dent on all these plans. So it's it's almost like a spirit is trying to tell you here, like, listen, if there is something, nothing is going to stop you. All right. You have the energy, you have the spirit, you have the power to manifest greatness in your life. And you've been doing it and you've done it time and time again. Nothing is ever going to stop that. It's like you have that inside of you. That's your vibration. Group number two. But if there is something that's going to stop you is potentially, and I'm going to use the, the word, but don't get offended, your ignorance towards your health, your ignorance towards, ignorance towards what you're putting in your body. And so I feel like maybe potentially you've been making some lazy decisions, right? And that's normal. You know, many professionals do this. They focus so much of their attention on, on, on what they want to accomplish on the end goal and they kind of sacrifice something, right? It's very rare the kind of person where they, they that can just put everything together and just vibrate under this completely balanced um, energy, right? Where everything in their life is just beautifully balanced, right? There's always something. There's always a trade-off, and it seems like your trade-off, group number two, is your 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 decision making when it comes to food. You know, just a lot of unhealthy uh, food choices and options, and so it's time for more. Maybe I feel. And I feel this very intuitively. Again, I am not a dietitianist. Please, please do your research when it comes to what diet works best for you. But the fact that, you know, I am intuitively picking up on a green diet, a whole foods diet, perhaps there's something there. Maybe you can start doing a little research there um, and the benefits of it and the research that's out there. Potentially, that might be something that, that will assist you. All right. 
But um, yeah, this is uh, the a complete 360, right? This is what Spirit would like for you to potentially like, you know, really uh, just pay attention to at this time. It's funny because it's right next to treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply, right? These two cards are kind of like something that Spirit is telling you. You should potentially do these right now at this moment while you wait, while you're putting the pieces together, while the clues are being presented to you. Uh, go ahead and vibrate in, the, in this energy right here, right? Uh, working on your health, working on your... Um, Working on your, on your, yeah, we're working on your health for that wealth, right? We're going to rhyme a little bit. And then also working on your relationships with uh, the people that, that love you and care for you. Let's go ahead and throw some mini cards. Let's see if the mini cards can offer us a more direct message. We're going to start with the Secret Garden mini deck. I'm just going to throw one. And let's see what message we get from the Secret Gardens. Joy, oh boy. All right, so I'm going to put the cards away. Just allow me a quick moment. We're going to take a look at that card right now. So we've got here joy. Interesting. Make time for the little things today. Ha <laughs> ha. Joy. So vibrate under that energy, right? Interesting. Vibrate under an energy of joy. Do things um, happy. Do things with this energy of just um, excitement, right? This is the energy that spirit wants you to be under. Do things with a sunny disposition. That's how things go well. All right, so let's go ahead and throw a card from the Whispering Woods. Also, that card, Joy, it, it signals also what is coming, right? It's a representation of the energies that are coming into your life. All right, so we're going to throw a card from the Whispering Woods. Let's see what the Whispering Woods want to whisper to you. We're going to throw just one. Let go. Oh boy. All right. And let go. So the message here from let go is enjoy the pulsing light of the firefly, but don't hold on too tight. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so that is a very interesting message. And I feel that that message is uh, very different for many, for, for, for people. I feel like, you know, to, to some, it means something, um, that, that has to do with uh, just enjoying the energies around you, letting go of energy. But for others, you know, it, it, it's also talking about taking things too seriously, right? Because when you think, take things too seriously and to heart, you end up getting upset. Um, so, you know, these cards are essentially telling you to avoid the energy of sorrow, avoid the energy of despair, avoid this energy of like lackluster, um, you know, maybe I have to wait or maybe things aren't going precisely how I want to or maybe I, I wish that it was different or, you know, let go of that, you know, re release that expectation, start flowing a little easier, a little better, have fun with what you're doing, you know, have fun with your food choices, have fun with those loved ones, have fun with the energies in front of you now, um, because the cards are telling you, listen, you are going to just be blessed with a rush of newness into your life, right? Ace of coins, ace of cups, right? You've got desire. You've got this brilliant light, luminous life force that's coming. Um, and you also have energies here of happiness, nine of cups. You know, you've got an energy of prosperity and being able to just give with the six of coins. Um, keep in mind the wait, wait, don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. Combine that with the Ten of Swords. It's, and the reason why you need to do this is because you're going somewhere. Something is coming. Something has been manifested. Something has been kind of ordained and, and, it's, and it's happening, right? Your spirit guides have all come together. They're working to make it happen. And so now it's the time uh, for you to just try and see clearly. You know, and, and just understand that you've asked for something. Now you have to wait. You have to pick up on the clues so that you can actually take um, the proper actions. And be authentic. Let your truth be heard in every way. All right. So that is what I see here. Group number two. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Don't forget to give the video a like. Please, please. And also, if you are interested in a private reading with me, I am offering those at this time. You will have to go through my Etsy store in order to place your private reading. The link is going to be in the description below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on how, you know, if you have any questions about uh, how to place your private readings or um, at this moment, I'm offering unlimited, right? Unlimited questions. You can ask as many questions as you like for a flat rate. 
uh, and I've worked with many seekers and I enjoy doing those private readings. Um, also, let me know if you have any ideas. I want to hear them in the comment section. One thing that I want to talk to you seekers about is, you know, I have been very, um, there's been a lack of me responding to your comments. Um, you know, I took a lot of pride in the past at responding almost on a daily basis to every single comment, right? Uh, letting you seekers know essentially what I thought about your comment. I, I always wrote back. It's getting a little bit chaotic. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, every day there's just um, a lot of comments to go through, a lot to respond back to. It's taken up a lot of time. And so, unfortunately, at this time, I I'm unable to respond to everyone. It's been very difficult. And it's a little bit of a heartbreaker for me. Like, I, you know, I've been sad about that because I have to try and invest my time a little more, a, a little wiser. And the reason why I want to invest my time uh, a little more wisely is because I want to create more pick a card videos, right? I want to try and do a minimum 12 pick a cards every month. Right now I'm only doing like four or five. I want to do minimum 12. And I believe that these messages are very important for the world, for the collective, for the generation that's, uh, that's coming, Generation Z. You know, I read an article the other day that said that one in five Gen Zers have tried to commit suicide. That's a huge, huge statistic. It doesn't even come close to millennials um, or, or other generations. So the newer generation is depressed, um, downtrodden, nihilistic. Uh, and, you know, and the reason why is because of lack of spirituality. You know, we've become very technology based. We've become uh, just people who are just filled with the desire for for more technology. And, and so anyways, um, it was a sad thing to come to the realization of. So I want to try and give the best that I have inside of me to be able to just change that in any way. And I feel that these readings help. Um, I feel that the belief in spirit helps, uh, the belief in something greater than yourself. So I want my message to reach more people. And the only way to do that organically is to do more pick a card readings, is to do more tarot card readings, is to bring uh, more messages of uh, just transformation and more spiritual messages to people. And so I have to try and dedicate my time and I have to, to, to use it wisely. So I have uh, some, cha some changes that I'm going to be making, um, some things that I want to do. Um, I, I am still offering private readings, um, you know, albeit there is a limit. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you seekers still do want to do that, that's fine. Um, but there will be some changes that I will be implementing. I will let you guys know. Um, I hope that, that you guys um, enjoy those changes. And it's all for the betterment of this channel. It's all to create more pig a card readings. It's all to, to bring you seekers more quality content um, and help that new generation, that new Gen Z, and, and bring them out of this energy of despair through the message of spirit. Um, and I hope that you seekers see that. I hope that you understand that. Um, and I hope that you are vibrating with me 100% uh, because this is truly important. Um, this is the next step, right? This is, what's, this is what's needed. This is what we need to talk about in today's society. Um, this is it. And so, you know, we are at the forefront of it and we're going to make it happen. So I want to thank you seekers so much. Uh, thank you for your love. Thank you for just being present, for supporting me. I love every single one of you. Um, I love reading, reading your comments. Um, so don't, don't stop writing. I will be reading them. Um, it's just, unfortunately, I, you know, it's going to be a little slower with my replies, but I want you to know that I love every single one of you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your beautiful energies. And bye-bye. Welcome, group number three. Welcome. All right. So, group number three, before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. I will be creating many more picky card videos very soon. So, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Also, give the video a like. And if you are interested in a private reading, uh, I, I am offering those at this time. You will have to go through the Etsy store in order to be able to place your order. The link is going to be in the description below. All right, so let's get started. We are trying to answer the question today, what is coming next in love? 
We're going to start with the Lover's Oracle deck, all right? Uh, this is uh, an Oracle deck that's, that's very special. Um, you know, every card has an image. This is going to represent essentially your, um, I guess, the, the essence of the reading, the main message. And here is the artwork associated with your theme. The message is balance. Okay. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. My, oh my, oh my. Okay. That is a pretty powerful message, right? And uh, I feel like it's even more exemplified because this is what is coming next in love. And so the fact that your key word is balance is in some ways very beautiful, you know. So there's definitely an energy here of reaching balance, reaching something that you've been needing. Whatever that balance looks like, it's going to come in a very dynamic way. And then there, there's there's a message here as well. You know, love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. So it's almost like there's an energy or a feeling or an understanding that needs to take place for this balance before this balance comes, right? Um, love isn't just blind obedience. It's not just, you know, um, agreeing to everything for the sake of it just because, you know, they're, they're, you don't want to be lonely or you don't want to be, uh, uh, you want to be in the relationship. You don't want to be single. Um, sometimes, you know, we just give our power way too easily. And then it finishes off by saying a great relationship is one that both supports and challenges, right? So, very well balanced. There is a sense of uh, finding the right person that's going to support you in the right dynamic way. And then also at the same time, hold you in check, right? This person is going to be honest with you, communicate what they want, expects uh, something from you. And, and you need to be the exact same way. So this is a balancing kind of, of relationship. I feel like maybe for some of you, you haven't had this. Maybe in your past relationship, you dated someone who just took, took, took. Um, potentially for some of you, uh, maybe you yourself have been taking, 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 you know. Um, honestly, I feel that there's more people who are in, the, in that first energy of, I got everything taken away. You know, a lot of you are going to resonate with that a little bit more than you being the ones that actually did the taking. Um, I feel that the reason why the main message and the theme of this reading is reaching a balance in your relationship and the reason why your first um, advice or the first piece of information is, you know, love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. It's because, you know, maybe you've dated a couple of narcissists, right? Maybe you've dated a couple of uh, self-absorbed individuals that demanded all of this and you just gave it, right? You didn't even, you didn't even question it. You just gave into it. You gave away your power. And so it's time to recuperate that power. And, and in this next relationship, the beautiful thing about this next relationship and what is coming next in love for you is that you're going to be able to find that power. And, and that power lies in a balanced energy, in a balanced relationship. So let's go ahead and throw some tarot. This is a very beautiful message. Let's see how this is going to unfold. We're going to use a different tarot deck for this reading, Seekers, not the same old, same old. We're going to use a new one. This is the Rose Tarot from Nigel Jackson. So we're going to go ahead and utilize that deck. And let's well, go ahead and shuffle and see what we get. Let's see what we get. Spirit, help us here. What is coming next in love for group number three? What are the energies here? What are the energies here? You've got some nice cards here. You have got some very, very nice cards here. And it's very, very nice to see. I really like this. Um, so, you know, we start off with the Seven of Cups upright, the Two of Coins upright, and then we, we move to the Ace of Swords upright, the Magus, which is the Magician here, and the Three of Cups reversed. So, the first two cards, the Seven of Cups and the Two of Coins, these cards are talking about what is coming next, right? More information on what is coming next. 
And with the Seven of Cups, what you have is this uh, this person just kind of you know preparing the grounds for for something. You know, this is a person that's working, doing the 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 work that's uh, required in order to bring something into existence, or, or just um, you know to 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 be able to yield some result out of it. And also, the Seven of Cups is the card of options. You have options at your disposal. You have different things that you can do. So it's like you're being kind of told here with this card that there are suitors, right? There's people out there that are going to want to perhaps potentially be in a relationship with you. And so I feel that with the Two of Coins, what you're being asked to do is to consider those people and and consider what they're what they're offering and and also plan ahead accordingly and ultimately to listen to your intuition listen to that internal guy that that's always trying to guide you and, and take to that to to what's right and so that's where you're going to find balance that's where you're going to find prosperity right you've got here essentially you know a woman just finding her balance finding her center and um, this is a woman who understands that she is in a place right now uh, where she's reaching her her complete authentic self. And so she's just very well balanced. She's making the right decisions. She knows what she wants. She sees very clearly what's in front of her. You know, this is a person who understands what needs to happen at this moment in time. And so it comes from the realization that if you give too much and you don't demand, then you are unbalanced, right? And I feel like maybe for some of you, you've forgotten that. You didn't have that, that understanding before. So the advice, the advice is very interesting because you've got the Ace of Swords. So what you're being told here with this Ace of Swords is to really think things through, right? There's definitely uh, new ideas and new uh, there's a new process. There's a new way of thinking that that needs to come into into existence for you. So you're being asked to do a little more thinking. Think what you want, what you desire in your life. Uh, perhaps there's things that you're missing. Maybe you are acting out out of some kind of fear, or you're acting out out of you know out of some kind of ignorance. Uh, maybe you have believed some of the lies that people have told you. So it's time to correct this, right? Think clearly, see what you want, and um, ultimately, there's an incredible amount of power inside of you to manifest whatever it is that you want into existence. And that is why you've got the Magus here, right? So the, the, the Magus here is the, the magician in this deck, and the Magus stands here with all of his uh, little trinkets, you know, he's got all of his books and um, all of the tools at his disposal, the Magus is well informed. The Magus uh, is emotionally stable. The Magus um, has the skills and the right thought process to bring whatever they want into existence. And the Magus has the energy and the desire to change their lives for their greatest good. And so the Magus is the ultimate manifester. And you're being asked to, to, to be this for yourself, to, to be this for um, you know, the, your projects and the things that you want, right? That is your advice. Your advice is to tune into that magazine inside of you so that you can bring about anything that you want in your life. Now, you've got the Three of Cups reversed. And the Three of Cups is the energy of celebration. It's the energy of fun. It's the energy of um, just having, having this... I would say graciousness to just have fun, you know, joy, uh, celebrations, right? Um, you know, being happy with other people and friends. So the fact that it's reversed, maybe some of you have been feeling a bit depressed. You know, maybe there's this feeling of lacklusterness. Maybe there's this, uh, you know, feeling of I don't know if things are going to be the same again. For some reason, there's a bit of nihilism going on here. Group number three. And so this is an area where potentially you need to examine a little further. Why am I so upset? Why is it that emotionally I, I don't feel happy? I don't feel content. Why? And so examine this very closely because I feel that this energy of being upset, being down, emotional turbulence 
is leading to this magus uh, not being what it should be. And so if there's something getting in the way of this magus from manifesting, from doing what this magus wants to do, um, is this emotional turbulence, right? So perhaps potentially, a, you know, what, what these three cards are asking you, these are your advice cards, is, you know, think very clearly and try to reason and try to come to an understanding of why you are going through this emotional turbulence. You know, use your your pen, use your words, um, communicate, right? Uh, and, and so it's important for you to get down to the nitty gritty. Many times, you know, some, we unfortunately are unhappy because maybe we feel alone. Uh, we feel abandoned or we feel like uh, things are not going to improve. And so these are all things that unfortunately are lies. Things will improve. Things will get better. Um, and, and bad situations have only come to pass and not stay, especially for someone who is a magus like you, a manifester, someone who brings things into existence by the, the, the powers around them, uses the elements and bends everything to their will, right? That's what the magus does. And so you are being, you're kind of vibrating under this magus energy, right? You are this magus. And so... Perhaps you haven't been able to tap into this magus completely because of this emotional turbulence. Are you afraid of being alone? What do you fear? Why do you fear it? How do you fear it? Have you reached the place where you are unable to just, you know, enjoy life, to just observe life and laugh at all of the, you know, different things that, that life has to offer? Are you a person that gets upset very easily? Why, why are you getting upset? Why is it that you are going through this emotional turbulence? says and then once you come to the understanding of this i feel that things are just going to get better for you um so it all boils down to balance in your next relationship and so it's important for you to understand this right and and i feel like there is definitely someone coming into your life right there is an energy of of a loving balanced energy uh, but there is some work that needs to take place. We started with the Seven of Cups. We've got a person working, preparing the grounds for what's coming next. Uh, that work and that preparation leads to the Two of Coins, balanced uh, mindset, balanced life, and ultimately you reaching your ultimate good, your magus, right? Through an understanding of what is ailing you, what is making you upset, what triggers you, and controlling that to the point where you're able to just... Uh, you know, experience the things or, or talk about a topic that would have triggered you before and now all of a sudden it's not. You just laugh at it, right? Um, or you know, maybe you were afraid to be alone, but now you're not. Now you actually are uh, filled with excitement to be alone, to actually go out into a place of loneliness and just enjoy that quiet time, right? So deep examination is required. All right, so we're going to throw some Oracle cards. We're going to see uh, what the oracles have to say. Uh, we're going to start with the Whispers of Love. So here's the box of the Whispers of Love. We're going to start with this one. We're just going to throw one and we're going to let, we're going to let these cards speak to us, shall we? Let's see. We're just going to throw one. Spirits, what do you have to tell us? Oh, rest and relaxation. Okay. So spirit has a little bit of, a, a bit of homework for you. Right, so you've got here a card of rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take a break. Interesting, right? So, you know, spirit wants you to rest a little bit. Spirit wants you to really just um, perhaps enjoy yourself. Um, and when I mean enjoy yourself, I mean like, you know, take a load off, right? I feel like maybe a lot of you um, have been in some ways doing the work to try and figure out why you're unhappy or potentially you've just been in this energy way too long and it's causing you physical, uh, kind of like a physical, there's a physical reaction to it. And so it, it leads to you not feeling energized. Um, and what you are doing is essentially depleting you of your energy. So resting and relaxing is essential. Spirit would like for you to focus on that. Uh, there is a fundamental need to take a break and, and just, you know, take a load off. So interesting. Let's keep this going. Let's go ahead and keep this going. Let's see what the Priestess of Light wants to reveal to us. So here's the box from the uh, Priestess of Light. We're going to throw just one card and see what message we get here. We are not going to accept those. Just one. 
power over difficulty. All right, reclaiming your power. My goodness, we, we, we were literally talking about that, right? Reclaiming your power. And now we actually have the, the priestess of light shining some light on this uh, situation. So power over difficulty, reclaiming your power. And we have here a representation of you just um, manifesting greatness, really. This is you in your full-on magus form, um, actually practicing it and, and getting it done. So you have incredible power, group number three. You have powers um, that you, for some reason, aren't using. You know, you've been... You, you give your power away too easily to these relationships, to these people. It's not good. So it's important for you to have your power, to use your power, to, to speak from an authentic place. Your words have incredible power. And so I feel like maybe there's this, we go right back to this Three of Cups, right? This unhappiness, this unwillingness to, to just, well, let me, let, me not, let me not even go there. What, I mean, what I'm saying is with the Three of Cups reversed is you're upset. Right? You're emotionally upset. And I feel like, you know, there's this fear of maybe losing this person. There's this fear when you're in a relationship of this person maybe leaving. And so for some of you, it looks like you give your power too much because you want this person around because of this like energy of like dread or maybe abandonment or, or uh, you know, being lonely or just not being able to feel happy unless that person is happy. And so there's this energy here that you need to really examine because you are a manifester. You are a creator. You are a very powerful, powerful being, group number three. Uh, but you are giving that power away. You're giving that power away because you're being maybe a bit needy and you need something. And um, that's something that you think you need is not actually a need, but more of an obsession, right? And so it's leading you to emotional turbulence. So it's, it's important to examine how you've given your power away because here we have essentially the priestess of light telling you to reclaim your power and almost, you know, highlighting, you know, she's, she's, pointing at all of these other cards that we have here. So it's like, you listen very closely, all right? Because this is how you reclaim your power. That's kind of the message of this card, right? Um, and also, you know, the, the, the Priestess of Light is, isn't, isn't, isn't um, taking away from the difficulty that this situation will bring. This is a difficult situation. So these, these, this emotional turbulence that you're feeling is difficult to go through, right? And, and it's, I feel it's very much a part of the human experience and so it might take some time, it might take some energy, which is why we go right back to that rest and relaxation, right? Just calm down, um, relax, and um, understand that everything everything has its time. And, you know, there's definitely a reclaiming of power that needs to take place before this relationship can come into existence. All right, so we are going to try and uh, find your flower, your flower for, I guess, for this relationship. Let's see, this is from The Language of Flowers by uh, Sherilyn Darcy, right? So let's go ahead and see what we get. We're going to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And we are going to try and figure this out. String. Okay, strength. Yes, I like the, I love this card. You've got the wild sunflower. All right, and the wild sunflower is here to tell you that your next relationship is going to be where you reclaim your strength. And that is so dynamic because it's in tune 100% with the message that is being given here, that is being presented here in, in, in such a beautiful way. So, all right. You have given your power in past relationships. I think that you have never felt powerful in your relationships. And so what the cards are asking you, what spirit is demanding of you, is to find out why that is, right? Do the work necessary to find out why you've given away your power. And understand that your next relationship, in your next relationship, it's going to be a relationship where you reclaim it and you see just how strong you are. And so this relationship is about strength. It's about knowing your strength and knowing that you are capable, knowing that you are able, knowing that you are ready to bring about an energy of true glory into your life and into your relationship. Beautiful, beautiful message from Spirit. Let's go ahead and keep the Oracle cards coming. huh? Yes, we're going to throw a uh, gratitude Oracle 
Here's the box for the Gratitude Oracle by Angela Hartfield. And we're going to throw just one. And let's see what, uh, what key words we get here. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Here we are. Seek. <laughs> so you've got the energy of Seek, number 17. Um, and I feel that there's a double meaning here. All right, so this card is essentially telling you, Seek and you will find. All right. Um, and not only that, but you will be led as well. The number 17, the moment I saw the number 17 here, I thought about the star. The star is the number 17 of the major arcanas. And I feel like, you know, with the star, there's this energy uh, from spirit of, I want to guide you. I want to I want to lead you to a place of true prosperity, a place of happiness, a place of joy, a place, a place where you can just, you know, let your head down or let your, your hair down and relax, right? And not feel like there's this restrictive kind of chaotic energy. I want for there to be order in your life. And so this energy of seek is essentially spirit challenging you to do the work necessary to figure out why you are emotionally distraught, why you are feeling what you are feeling. Only you are going to be able to figure this out. No one, no one can tell you the answers to this. Potentially, maybe you can get messages here and there. If it resonates, if you feel it very deeply in your heart that it might be true, or there might be some truth to that, then, then, then there might be and examine it further. But Find out why you are somewhat, you know, feeling a bit down. Why is it that in past relationships you've given your power away? Um, you know, for for some of you, maybe you are in a relationship right now. So maybe perhaps potentially, you know, find out why you are right now at this moment giving your power away. Why don't you feel powerful? What changes need to occur in order for your relationship to be uh, to reach a place of balance, which is the, the main message of this card, right? So seek and you will find, um, seek spirit and spirit will show its energy to you. Let's keep the Oracle cards coming. Uh, we are going to throw, I have so many, so many Oracle cards. There's like a mess. If you seekers can see this, you're probably like, what the heck? There's so many decks everywhere. Um, so I'm trying to intuitively decide which one is best, and I think I'm going to do this one. So we're going to go ahead and throw an Ancestor Spirit Oracle deck, or Oracle card. Let's see what these cards have to tell us. We're not going to assign any... We're not going to assign like any anything to these cards. We're just going to let Spirit flow here and try and give us what Spirit wants to give us, whatever that may be. Family connections. Oof, interesting. You know, it's funny because I said, okay, we're going to let spirit just talk. Uh, we're going to let spirit try and share something with us. And and spirit kind of took a 360. Um, it's funny. And, 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 you know, this happened actually already once with this exact same deck. So that's hilarious. So anyways, family connections, respect, people, kinship. You know, you're being asked to maybe take a role in your family. You know, maybe there's definitely an energy in your family where there's some disconnection. Uh, maybe other people in your family are also upset. Maybe they feel powerless. Uh, maybe they have gone through the same kind of energy that you're going through. And sometimes when they are, when people are going through the same things that, we, that we're going through, and we're having trouble understanding this, we tend to stay away from them because we don't want to come, come to... Um, face to face with that energy we don't want to to face that and so we, we tend to stay away from the people that are kind of uh you know vibrating under that same kind of negative energy and that's it's understood but uh, maybe there's something there maybe there's something that you can take from this maybe there's something that you can learn from this um maybe there's a connection that can be established and that connection leads to a connection to spirit and the messages that spirit is trying to deliver to you um so respect people and kinship uh respect the messages that you get um, you know, I said before that this is something that you're going to have to figure out on your own, this emotional turbulence, and come into an understanding of why it keeps happening, which ultimately leads to you giving too much and giving your power away. So, interesting. Let's go ahead and throw some mini cards. I want to try and get a direct message for you, group number three, now that we've got this Family Connections card. I want to get a direct, direct message for you. And how we're going to do this is through, hopefully, these little mini cards. So let's throw a secret garden card and let's see what we get from the secret garden, shall we? Let's shuffle.
chair. Oh boy. All right, let me put the cards away. And now we're going to get a close up of that. So we've got here share. And the message from share is the busy bee should still make time for each flower. Interesting, right? And it's funny, you know, because we did get um, this uh, this kind of family card here. And um, now we have this share card. So this is a card of making time for what you want in your life, you know, for the energies in your life that you deem most important. Making time for that. Um, so the busy bee should still make time for each flower. So this is not only people, but events. You know, what what is it that you are missing out on? You know, what uh, what are you not giving attention to? You know, are you not perhaps, you know, rest and relaxation? Are you just working too hard? Are you uh, perhaps, you know, ha are you having a restless kind of energy? Why is that? So also examine per perhaps potentially what you've stopped doing before that was working for you and you stop doing it, examine why you stopped, examine how you can maybe start doing it again, um, you know, in order to reach this place of just uh, fulfillment and balance in your life. There might be a message there for you. So share, the busy bee should still make time for each flower. All right, we're gonna throw a card from the Whispering Woods. All right, let's see what the Whispering Woods wants to whisper to us. We're gonna shuffle, 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 and we're just gonna throw one card. Ah, Dan, you know what's funny? I literally saw this card. I saw group number three dancing and look at this. So allow yourself some fun each day, just as the sun dances with the moon each night. Dance. Man, that makes so much sense. Um, so Some of you, you know, you're unhappy and you can't show, you just, just can't come out of it, all right? There's this energy of lethargy. There's this energy of restlessness. There's an energy of not being able to find any kind of contentment. You are unhappy. Some of you, some of you, right? Take what resonates, leave the rest. But some of you are very unhappy. There's an energy here of unhappiness. There's this energy here of not being able to fully uh, enjoy yourself, enjoy your surroundings, enjoy the events, enjoy um, the things that you're eating, you know, enjoying yourself, enjoying life. There's an energy of restlessness. Why is that? And so what spirit would like for you to focus on group number three, very important is this energy of fun and joy. So we examine the three of cups once again, three of clubs, three of cups is the energy of joy, feeling that joy and, you know, celebrating with friends, the people that really care about you, the people that have invested their time and energies to make sure that you're happy and content. You know, these people um, perhaps are trying to reach out to you. Maybe you just you're not accepting it. Um, boy, and, and I feel like for some of you is because of this love connection or maybe even this love obsession at this point or this desire to have this love or relationship and not having it. And when you are in a relationship, you tend to give too much and uh, then you don't get that that uh, in return and uh, things just end up falling apart and then you become even more upset and even more depressed. So, you know, it's a vicious cycle. But one of the ways that you can overcome this, you know, and, and it's it's very simple. One of the one one of the few ways, one of the few tips is resting and relaxing, right? Just resting and relaxing. Number one. Number two, enjoying yourself. Dance. Put on some music, right? Put on some high vibrational music, music that you love, and just allow yourself in that moment to enjoy that moment, to dance and to have fun. And then number three your friends, your the people that care about you, share with them, right? Enjoy their time, enjoy that connection, um, have that kinship. And then number four, start seeking the proper, just the proper things in your life. Start seeking more, start proactively looking for what's missing, what's lacking, what needs change. Um, and, and that will ultimately come to you, all right? So that is what I see here, group number three. I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Give the video a like as well. And if you are interested in a private reading, uh, you can go ahead and purchase one of those private readings through my Etsy store. The link is gonna be in the description below. 
Um, let me know if you secrets have any questions about those private readings. Um, I, I enjoy doing them. Um, so, seekers, uh, I wanted to also talk to you about, you know, the comments. I read pretty much every comment, but I've been very slow to respond. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I knew it was going to come to this at some point, um, but it's come, and it's it's pretty exhausting because I'm getting a lot, a lot of comments. It's very difficult to respond now to everyone. Um, so, you know, it's getting to the point where some people are falling between the, the cracks, and I, I'm, I haven't been able to respond. I'm very sorry. I took a, I take a lot of pride in uh, in responding, and now it's it's gotten to the point where you know it's getting out of hand. But you know I want to thank you for all of your loving messages and and all of your support. I'm trying to find a way to balance my time more effectively. I want to bring you more pick a card tarot readings. Right now I do about four or five a month. I want to start doing more than twelve, right? So you know it's going to take. Um, a complete reshuffling and rebalancing of my schedule to make that happen and I do want to do it uh, and one of the reasons I'm so motivated to do it is because of an article that I read the other day that said that one in five Gen Z people um, they've tried to commit suicide that one really hit me hard you know the the, the youngest generation is feeling so depressed and downtrodden and, and, and nihilistic that one in five have attempted suicide at some point that is heartbreaking I mean it, it's and so you know the other generations they don't come even close to those numbers so something is happening all right um, and and so there's a lack of spirit there's a lack of I feel this is what I feel deep, deep, very deep in my heart there's a lack of spirit there's a lack of connection to the source and we're becoming more technologically savvy, we're becoming more um, narcissistic, we're becoming more self-absorbed, we're becoming more competitive, and we're lacking in our spirituality, we're lacking in our connection with spirit, and this is to the detriment of our society. And so what I want to do, the only thing that I can do personally, me right now, Tara Magician, Ricky, what can you do? I can try and connect with these people as much as I can, and the only way to do that is to put out free material like this, to dedicate my time, as much time as I can, to more pick a cards, more messages, more transformative messages. This is what I can do. This is what I have control over. Um, and I plan on, on giving as much as I possibly can to try and correct that, to try and maybe bring some kind of light into that new generation. Uh, because that is our future. As much as we try to ignore and we make fun of other generations and we point the fingers, they're this, they're that, the new generation is our future. And so if they are going through that kind of nihilism, it, it, it falls on us, it falls on me um, to try and help in some way. So, you know, that is what I want to do. I want to dedicate a lot of time to that. Uh, putting out more free content, more pick a card readings, um, and not only pick a cards. I want to do other things as well that I think you seekers will enjoy. Um, but boy, I have a lot of plans, a lot of projects. I I have new things that I'm coming, new uh, different things that I'm going to start promoting um, that I think you seekers will enjoy. And um, you know, I I just I I thank you seekers for being a part of this community. Thank you for your support. Um, thank you for your loving words and your messages. Thank you, truly. Um, and that's it. That's all I have to share with you. Let me know in the comment section if you have any ideas. I'm still going to be reading through them. Um, I'm still going to try and respond as much as I can. But it's it's become a bit exhausting because there's just so many messages. So many. You know, I'm still getting... Um, I'm still getting messages or comments from like, you know, the very first videos that I put out. You know, <laughs> that was a long time. I'm still getting them. So now it's like, you know, it, it's just like this huge ball like the snowball it just keeps getting bigger and bigger so it's hard to respond to everyone but I still want to know if you have any ideas um, if you have anything that you would like to see me do differently let me know seekers thank you so much much love from me to you bye bye